Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and in this case I'd like to talk about using your firearm in self-defense. If you're interested in that sort of thing, keep in mind, stay for this video, I think you're going to be getting something useful out of it. Now, have we seen in several different uh, shooting videos from you know police camps and that sort of thing, we see that many things go wrong that people usually don't expect. Uh, some of the, those may be the idea of why is it that I have to train single-handed with one hand and the other? Well, because when you're shooting at someone and that someone else is shooting at you, then there's a great chance that your hands may be just in your center of mass in that same position where he's actually aiming at and you're aiming in that same place as well so when your hands go there there's a good chance of your hands your arms getting hit so that's why you train to shoot with both hands if necessary and what happens when you have someone and yes for those wondering these the gun is unloaded check there so yeah fully unloaded um, unloaded gun um, what happens when you have someone on top of you or just very close and he's just trying to grab your gun or touches the firearm or you're pressing this against the body of someone goes out of battery the gun is not gonna be working for you even you know you may get nothing out of it you're just pulling the trigger and you're desperately thinking oh I'm, oh my god I've got a jam I got something going on no it's just out of battery and the gun is not working if you pull back you're gonna be able to get that shot out so all of these things are the kind of thing you usually learn in in classes and so you have to take these classes and usually in my experience which you know it's it is what it is but in different places I've taken this sort of classes usually it's more of a intermediate or advanced class I, I haven't I don't recollect ever having seen this sort of thing in the in the a basic uh, defensive shooting class or in the first or in the beginners class it's usually a little bit more advanced than that and, and it's perfectly fine because there is uh, a component there that you know it requires um, a learning curve and you just cannot throw all of this in, in the same in the same day or in the same couple days usually you have to progress and evolve uh, along uh, along the way so some of these things you may have seen in videos and such maybe not actually tried or or had this taught in, in in actual proper classes but it's important that you do look there's great things to get out of a, a competitive shooting a sport shooting practical pistol i love that th that stuff and you are going to be learning extremely valuable skills mostly speed and accuracy that is fantastic and even people that are like you know a, you know a, a tactical a guys from you know swat or special forces or whatever those guys hugely appreciate the idea of being fast and accurate that's a very important element but there's also a big difference between sport and fighting you know this is not about how many uh, alphas I got or how accurate I got or how many seconds I caught in my stage or whatever this is about fighting and this is fighting with a gun fighting with a knife fighting with a rock or your bare hands but the key word is fighting it doesn't matter if you're getting those if it's a, a 10 or a 9 or an alpha no it's about winning the fight and these little skills come in into uh, play in a very significant manner these are the, th the things yes and my book is always you know all my books are linked there below for those that are interested um, these are things that I do explain here in street survival skills the idea of shooting from the retention position as we seen in, in some of these uh, previous videos again things that just go wrong and something that is important to know is how to shoot from the position of retention it's gonna be with your hand you know with your gun close to your torso to your ribs and shooting without using your sights but you have someone that is in extremely close proximity this other hand usually you see it you know go up there it may be used as to fight someone else it may be used so, so as to keep a gun uh, pointing away from you you just you're just trying to avoid getting shot maybe something like that he may have a firearm himself and you're just pushing that out of the way while you pump rounds with, with your gun from from that position and these things are important because if you only look at this from a uh, from a target shooting aspect you haven't had a serious professional training 
training with a, a defensive shooting firearms instructor. These are things that you may not have incorporated. So you may end up going like, boom, I go into the associate position, I go bum, bum, bum. And when the moment someone touches this, it goes out of battery, I have a jam going on, or I'm fighting with it for the control of the gun. We've also seen how many magazines are dropped. You know, just in the last few videos, I think it happened already like a couple of times in the last few videos I've analyzed in the channel, something that just touches the, the mag the mag release and just drops a magazine these just drop free so it doesn't matter if you have a, a perfect stance in the range when actually fighting if you accidentally touch this or you just bumped against a wall or against a car or against the, your your attacker there's a good chance that this may be actually accidentally engaged and you're going to be losing your magazine in the middle of the fight this is why i'm really not fond of the idea of using any extended mag releases and that sort of thing i think that it's big enough as it is and doing that is just going to be creating more opportunity for something going wrong when you don't want it now if you're um, if you're using this this for a practical shooting competition or, or you know open whatever it is that's fine leave the gun as it is for actual uh, fighting for the, the kind of thing you just don't want to mess with it's okay as it is in fact it's already larger than it was in the previous generation if I remember right I'm pretty sure it was a bit smaller so I think it's a, as large as it can be without making it dangerous guys I don't think you need any Maybe you have, again, these are things that may be very personal. Maybe you have the, the tiniest little hand in the planet and you just need that because if not, you cannot release your magazine properly. Okay, I get it. You know, everyone is different. I do understand that. In general, though, sometimes people think that more crap in the gun it compensates for lack of skill and training. Really, it doesn't work that way. You're just going to be making things more complicated and most li more likely to go wrong. So, you want to lear learn not just your uh, isosceles stance, which is fine, you know, but also the retention position and practice it. You're going to be at extremely close range. You're going to be doing, let me see if I have it. Yeah, and I do recommend my book. Of course I do. That's what I wrote it. But I believe that it's, you know, th this kind of thing, this kind of shooting, it's what I'm talking about. You just don't want to have your hand instinctively pointed out there when you have someone on top of you. You bring it to the retention position and that's where you start pumping rounds and, you know, closing that zipper as you go up and following up that line along the center of mass of your attacker so yeah this is the kind of thing that you do and it's this is just one more tool you may have others you may have actually a folding knife something like this it may be one of these other ones like the, the one i like the most lately the, the emerson design that self deploys with that hook a very popular for law enforcement the uh, tdi by uh, k bar this is the law enforcement that uh, no, the detective model i think this one is these are fairly popular for law enforcement guys like these for keeping in their ma uh, behind the magazines so it's uh, i'm at it's a uh, it's uh, about muscle memory so when you're reloading you're always going to the same place right when you're reloading your magazines your hand is going to the same position so if you keep this behind those magazines when you run out of magazines you pull out of the knife or if you just happen to need it because someone is on top of you or whatever you just go for it and you start working on on your attacker with it you know great little tool to have so all different tools and you know things to incorporate as as needed but it comes down to this i think it's important to know what you're going to be using depending on on what you're working with if i have the the distance yeah you're going to be using the the grip the stance you use the most if you have someone on top of you you're going to be preserving your gun because again it's not about target shooting it's not about competition it's about fighting and you want to win that fight okay folks that's going to be all for now remember the links below if you're interested in this stuff or some of my other books the Mars Survival Manual, Terrain Economic Collapse, Bugging Out and Relocating, Street Survival Skills, link down there in Amazon. See you in our next video. Have an awesome day. Take care.